Hi, I'm Rebecca Wilson with Tipa Snow's Positive Approach to Care Team. I'm here to serve as your guide as you watch this webinar, how to respond when someone asks the same question over and over. I'm gonna pause the video periodically to recap and highlight some of the principles that TIPA explores. As you watch this video, I encourage you to consider the gem state of the person you're working with and some of the repetitive questions or statements that you may hear. Hopefully you will find some great strategies that you can employ as you work with and support those who are living with dementia. Happy viewing and I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so I will share my screen for a second. And I'm gonna share for two reasons. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, we use a system uh, here at PAC that's a little bit different than global deterioration. We talk about the progression of this condition as people shifting from one state of brain and ability to another. And those states have names and those states are called gem states because we see what people still have and we see them as precious, unique, special, with characteristics for sure, but it's not a bad thing, it's just what it is. And we give them the right support and the right care and, and people shine. They can do what they can do. And my job is to support them so they can do what they can do. So we have sapphires, which is us on a good day. Diamonds are when we're a little stressed out or we have somebody who's maybe in the earliest stages of dementia where they're still clear and they're still able to have conversations, but they get a little concrete and they frequently get a little sharp edge to them or a little tearful and worried. Um, and they have a hard time with change, but they're really good with things they always do. Uh, emerald state is when People are clearly flawed, because the thing about an emerald is it has lots of color and it's on the go, but a true emerald's always got a flaw and they aren't always sure where they're going or exactly where we're headed. But they also are starting to, um, they know what they want, uh, sort of, but the thing is that I can't always think of the, um, you know, the whatchamacallits, the things that you say, the, um, Oh, shoot. Oh, this is silly. I know it. It's, um, you know, the thing that you say. The um, I can't think of it. But I know you do. You, you people do. You know what I'm talking about. So it's that time when you're so flustered, you can't come up with the words you're looking for. Um, you also can get stuck on something, and it's really hard to let it go and move on. But that something may be something from the past, not from the moment now. And when I want something, I have a hard time paying attention to much else uh, until that gets resolved. And then the next gem state is an amber. And that's when I really am caught right now. Um, and it's about what I like or what I don't like. And what I like, I'm going to try to get more of. And what I don't like, I'm not doing. That's it. I said it. That's all now. But I'm really more either chit chatty or argumentative. But it's like, whoa, 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 hey, 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 go, go, go out and get out of it, get out of it, get out of it. Now that's all, that's all. So you might hear me get loud or raucous, or I might get real quiet. But my abilities to use language per se, mm, a lot less. And then Ruby state is when I have more rhythm and sounds and single words, and I have gross skills, but not fine detailed skills. And pearls are where I'm hidden away, and it's only every now and then the shell opens and you find me in there. So I say all this because in our work today, we are going to talk about different states. And when we talk about repetitions, it's really important to know where a person is in that moment. So what we'll do is I'll demonstrate just sort of some general conversational abilities for each of these gem states. And then what I'll do is I'll show what happens when I have something that I'm, I'm focused on and I, and I want and I need and I approach somebody for. Hey there, just a quick pop in. So far, Tipa has given a brief overview of the gem state model, which she created to describe the progression of dementia. She uses this gem state model as an alternative to the global deterioration scale 
and other staging progression scales that you may hear about in the dementia care world. As you watch this video, I encourage you to consider the person that you support. What gem state might they be in on most days? And think about some of the approach strategies that TIPA explores as how to best support that person when you have the repetitive questions or repetitive statements. There's a lot of information in this webinar and I hope you can take away some great tools that'll be of service to help care partnering be better for you as well as the person you're supporting. So I'm going to do it as a diamond, but we're just going to be talking. Hey, Alejandro. Hey, Tifa. How are you? Well, I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Yeah. How about yourself? I'm fine. Hey, I like that painting that you've got back there. This one? Yeah. Now, did you do that? Did I do this one? Actually, I did not. I'm not quite sure where it came well, from. Well, it's very nice. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think that's my wife's choice. Huh? I think it's my wife's choice. She did it? Well, she did not paint it, but she bought it. Well, I, I thought you said your wife did it. Oh, I apologize. No, that's, I, I might have misspoken. Sorry, that's not what I meant to say. Oh. My wife bought it. She purchased Very it. Very nice. Thanks, yeah. Is it, did you, did someone do it for you? Did someone do it for me? Yeah. Um, we bought it. We purchased it. Oh. Well, who's the artist? I think I'd like to get it. One line. Huh. Interesting. So who's the artist? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I think there's a name here, but I can't quite make it out, actually. Oh, well, that's too bad. I, I like it. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Okay, so I'll pause there. And that's a great example of a diamond interaction. Um, so I'll go back to a gallery and I'm going to ask a few people, what did you notice about Alejandro's behavior around this? And what did you notice about my behavior? So Eileen, do you want to give me some thoughts about what you noticed? Or would you prefer not to? Can you hear me now? Okay, well, what I, what I noticed, I'm in my car, that's why this seems weird to me. Uh, what I noticed is that um, he sort of repeated your, the last few words that you were saying. And um, uh, so he actually repeated most of the words that you were saying. And um, so he was reflecting back to you what it is that he heard. Um, and, and repeated it in a different way when he was trying to understand yet again what it is that you were asking. So he initially was using your words, and then when he was able to say it again, he used different words to continue the conversation is what I noticed. Okay, so did you notice anything about what I did? Um. Yes, you were, well, you were wanting to know a little bit more about the painting. So it's not more. like, well, you were trying to get to the artist and you were. Was I willing to uh, let go of that painting? Absolutely not. No, you wanted more information. You wanted more information about that painting. So at first I was curious if he had, if he was the artist. What did I seem to have a difficult time getting? That you had a difficult time getting. What did um, you have a hard time picking up on? That he was not the artist. Now, I got that he wasn't the artist, but... Was his wife the artist? Was... Right. I really wanted to know who had done that painting. I like that right. painting. I would like a painting like that painting. Who did that painting? And right. 
he was like, just to pay me. I don't know. But if he treats it as unimportant, what he's saying is, my opinion is not valuable. Right. So he had to because I wasn't ready to let go of that painting yet. So I really wanted to know, well, if his wife didn't do it, then who did it? Because, it, and he had to sort of, he couldn't make out the name. Um, so this is an example of a diamond communication. Now, what do you all think is gonna happen every time I talk to Alejandro in this location? Wild guess, what do you think? Anybody want to make a guess? How about you, Alejandro? Do you want to make a guess? I've got a really solid guess that uh, I'm going to be talking about this painting quite a bit, I think. We're going to be talking about the painting. Now, why is it we're going to be talking about the painting? You seem to really like it for, I mean, for. No, it's because you I got have it. vision. Yeah, and you, this is all you're seeing of me. It's all I've got. Behind me, yeah. Yeah, so if Alejandro wants to change our communication, he's got to change the environment on his end. Because I'm not going to be able to ignore that painting behind him. It made such an impression on me. There is something about that painting that's drawing my eye. As much as I'm looking at him, I'm really paying more attention to that painting than I am to him. So if he wants to deliver a piece of information to me, he's got to move out from in front of <laughs> There we go. Alejandro has a special skill. It's called, you know, making the camera go away. So this is that time where the thing about diamonds is when they see you, if you had an interaction with them that raised an emotional bar, what you're going to see is the next time they see you, they may very well go back to that emotional conversation you had the last time. Even though you let it go, it's gone. It's not an issue. And the more deeply emotional that topic is for them, and the more they identify you as an information giver, the more they're going to come back to it. And if they feel like you're not giving them what they've asked for, or if you get an attitude about it. So Alejandro, go ahead and give me the, oh my God, mom. You, give me the mom story because I'll be your mother and you keep calling me on Zoom. So go ahead and give me the, hey, sweetheart. Hey. Well, hey, hey, how are you, mom? Well, I'm good. Good. So, good so tell me about now, did you paint that? This painting, well, we talked about this last time, Mom. We, we just bought it. It was from like... Oh, you just, what do you mean we talked about it last time? Uh, last time, we just talked yesterday. You're asking me about it again. I remember we were talking about that yesterday. We didn't talk Yeah, remember about Andrea picked it out. Huh? She picked it out. Andrea picked it out. What? Andrea, Andrea picked it out. Well, Andrea is your wife. I know that. Yeah, she's the one that bought it. We talked about this. I mean... Yeah, remember you asked me about the painter? Did she buy it? This is the first time hearing about it. So We've had it up here for months, Mom. I don't think you've had that up there for months. Well, I've been living here for months. I'm pretty sure I know what's on my why wall. Why you just make it? Why are you acting like this? Well, because we just went over this literally yesterday. We just I, I wouldn't this. remember if we went over this yesterday. Maybe it was someone else I was oh, talking to. This is what pisses me off. Well, sorry. I mean, you get an attitude about everything. You say, I never told you that, Mom. I already told okay. you. Well, that. you know, I'd really like to just talk to you if we could just move on. Fine. What do you want to talk about? Well, I don't want to talk if you have an attitude. <laughs> Let's pause because <laughs> I, think, I think we both demonstrated that we can get an attitude. So, this is that place and that time where. When I've done it, not once, not twice, not three times, but maybe every time, every single friggin' time that we start the conversation, here we go again. You're absolutely right because I'm rigid and I'm inflexible. And as soon as I see you, I get triggered by the thing that we've been talking about.
pocket, but this time it was just a painting. It could be about driving the car. It could be about the medicines. It could be about an appointment. Whatever it is, me seeing you triggers it up again. And it's you plus your voice plus the environment that's triggering this up. So if we want something to shift, it's not going to be me that's going to shift. It's going to be you that's going to shift. Or you have to be willing to have this same conversation day after day, interaction after interaction. Or you have to know what to do with the conversation to get it to go elsewhere. So Alejandro, do you feel like you have some of the skills that you would be willing to try to see if you could get it to go elsewhere? I'm totally willing to try to go somewhere else with you, Tifa, because I've had enough of this painting. So what I will do, <laughs> good luck on this. So what I will say to you is that Alejandra has already shown you some very core skills. When I say, I, I say to him, oh, now I really like that painting. Did you paint it? What he did is he used some of my words to slow the conversation down. So he, it's not getting out of control. Notice in the second time through when he, he got out of control was when he was answering my questions with more information. And I actually started talking over top of him because I'm going a certain direction. He's trying to get me to go another direction. And we're, we're, we're getting all revved up rather than chilled down. So let's see what happens. So Alejandro. Oh, hey. Oh, I like your painting. Oh, you like the painting? This one? Yeah, now, did you do that? Did I do this one? I, yeah. Not me. Not an artist. I'm not an artist. Yeah, well, you, except for Spider-Man. You can draw I, a mean Spider-Man. That's true. You do know I like Spider-Man. Yeah, one of yeah, those superheroes. you're super pretty good at that. But other than that, that's your crap for everything else. Yeah, actually, I, what, did you like the colors on this, Tifa? Or do you like the design of the tree the trees are the colors for you which one do you I like think the tree thing i think they remind oh you know what it is mm -hmm. uh, i thought of it you know that aunt terry and dawn they bought an island up in canada oh. and they have silver birches up in canada and so when we were up there helping them build the cabin when you know you oh man it was those awesome. silver birches yeah, silver birches, and they're beautiful, and they have that beautiful bark, and that's what they make yeah. canoes out of. Did you know they made birch canoes like out of that? They do make. I didn't know that. That's yeah, new yeah, to me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sure. So when we were up there, now, yeah. uh, <laughs> so let me ask folks on the call, wh what got us to a different place? So what did you notice that Alejandro did this time that got us to a slightly different place? Susan, do you want to give it a give it a whirl? What did you notice about what he, what happened this time? He distracted you by asking uh, whether you like colors, whether you like the pattern. He kind of got your mind going in a slightly different direction. Okay, so you used the word distract, and I'm only going to make a slight shift, and I'm going to say redirect. Okay. He redirected my attention. He kept it on the picture because distracted would be say, look, burn, burn, and he didn't do that. He actually stayed with the picture and the reason that's important is it as a redirect he lets my focus stay where it was but he redirects my attention to something about that thing so if I'm talking about something you don't try to get me on another road you just take that and you see if you can get it to shift a little bit into the safer territory or new territory, because you're tired of the same conversation over. So what did I go to? And this is really classic for, again, a diamond. Someone fairly early in a disease or with some dementia that isn't horrendous. It's not really hard to deal with, but it wears you out. So what kind of story did I go to? You went to the uh, silver birches in Canada and the island and the cabin and the building and so do this if you want, folks, if you want to do this with your hand to help you remember. I start telling you old stories, and they always have some kind of emotional bonding for me. It could be something that makes me happy, something that makes me sad, something that scared me, something. But what's happening is I'm tuned into music. Oh, wait. 
Can you hear music in the background? No? Oh, good. Because if you could, this would be really distracting. And so that is a distractor. Because what happened was we were talking visual and we were talking things. And there was a, what's going on? Because an auditory thing could distract someone from a conversation. And where before I, well, I was diamond, I could stay focused. Now all of a sudden I'm off somewhere and you're like, what is she talking about? So I get fixated, but then when I'm distracted, it's like bird. And you're like, how did she get to a bird? That's those facets of a diamond where you can't figure out where they're going sometimes. And so you have a hard time following them when they get distracted. But when they fixate on something, it wears you down because they keep cutting away and cutting away. And it's just like, if I have to hear this story about the white birches or the silver birches or whatever the birches are in Canada, one more time. And what I will tell you is, okay, got it. So it's hard for you to listen to that over and over. It's critical for you to listen to it with the intent of being able to tell that story when I can no longer tell that story. To know the story so well that you know the emotion it brings from me and the connectors it has for me and the place that it takes me and the way that it makes me feel about things because that will be something that you'll want to have when I get more lost in time. Because without that ability, you're gonna have a hard time redirecting me when I think I'm in another place in time. You gotta know my story and you gotta know it really, really well. And now's the time to get yourself to learn it. So rather than being bored because I've heard that before, can you create the same cadence to the story? Could you tell that story back to me, word for word, rhythm by rhythm, so that when I can't tell my story, you know my story to tell me. When I say, hey Alejandro, listen, have you seen Terry? I can't find her. I don't know where she is. You're looking for Terry, you don't know. You yeah, can't I find don't her. Know where she went. She was here. I know I was talking oh. to her and I don't I don't know where she got to. Well shoot. Well that's no was it Terry that you, you went and you you know from Canada? You you, you got the house built yeah, with her? Yeah, 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 yeah. We were working on the house. We were building yeah. the log house and, and then she said she needed to do something. I don't know what. Uh. But she's gone. So you, you can't find her, but you were building the house. You helped her build that house with the silver. Was it silver birches with it? Yeah, there's, sil there's silver birches right outside the place where you yeah. go out. Was it, was it Canada or somewhere else? Oh, yeah, Canada. Canada, Algonquin, Canada. Algonquin, Algonquin State Park. Yeah, Algonquin. right outside on an island, Poverty Island. They call, they call it. They call Ooh. it. They call it a Poverty Island because they paid for it. Well, they, well, that's a funny story there. I never heard that one. An island and we built a house on it. You built a house there. Well, I'll tell you what, Tifa, that's a lot of skill. I admire that. Yeah, yeah. So this is that pause. So I'll pause there. Because Nicole's asking a really good question, which is, what if you don't know their story? Okay, so Alejandro, you're going to play it over. Only this time you don't know about Canada. You think it'll be harder? Let me just ask that. Do you guys think it'll be a lot harder if you don't know my stories? Okay, so let me give you the core principles. If Alejandro does not know my story, and unfortunately, he's not familiar with my story, he doesn't know my story well, then what he's going to want to do is he's going to have to repeat my words and he's going to have to offer me either or options, either or, this or that. And he's first going to focus on what I'm giving him. He's going to have to work from that point outward. All right. A lot was covered in that section, starting with the role plays of a person living with dementia in the gem state that Tipa describes as a diamond state. One of the things that you likely noticed in the webinar was how someone 
in a diamond state has what Tipa refers to as tunnel vision. This was exhibited in the webinar through um, a fixation on the painting behind Alejandro when they were conversing. Tipa makes a distinction between redirection and distraction. The way that she describes redirection is a honoring the focus of the person's conversation while shifting to a different or perhaps safer conversation strategy. Whereas distraction simply changes the subject and may leave the person feeling like you didn't hear what they were saying or that they're misunderstood. In one role play, Alejandro attempts to correct Tipa and remind her that they've had the discussion of the painting before. Many of us have tried this approach and found that it's not that successful in most cases. In the next role play, Alejandro dug a little deeper into what Tipa was asking. Rather than try to distract her from the topic of the painting, he instead asked to learn more about did she like the colors in the painting or did she like the trees? And through this question, she was able to explore a memory, a long-term memory that was very meaningful for her. And she shared that story with Alejandro. Now, chances are that won't be the only time that she shares that story with him if she continues to have that artwork in her visual field. That can get frustrating for us as care partners from time to time when we hear the same story or we ask the, hear the same question over and over. That's the whole point of this webinar. Tipa does give quite a, a little tip though. I'd say just a little token of something to consider. And that is when we're hearing a story like Tipa shares in this webinar about her friend and their experience in connect in Canada, and she repeats the story. Tipa says, listen with intent to the story. Listen to the connectors that brought her to remember that story and the emotion behind the story. What we can do with that information later with advancing gem states is to reflect that positive long-term memory back to someone when they can no longer tell us themselves. In the role play where Tipa was asking about Terry, Alejandro was able to reflect back some of those long-term memories that he had heard over and over and really facilitate a connection with Terry when Terry wasn't even there. What a gift that is. Yeah, one of the participants on the webinar asked a question though, what if you don't know the person? Specifically, you don't know those long-term memories. You don't know the connection pieces. You don't know how to facilitate connections with someone that they might be missing. And TIPA provides two core principles that are really helpful in getting started with our response. The first is to reflect back what the person says. So simply reflecting back, which we're gonna talk about throughout this webinar, and then asking either or questions. The way that in the video Alejandro asked, again, is it the colors or is it the trees? And that allowed the conversation to evolve to a new place versus getting stuck in the traditional correcting that some of us may try, which is we've talked about the painting, no, et cetera, et cetera. That doesn't work so well. So a little bit about repetitive questioning in the diamond state and in this next video we're going to move from diamond state to emerald state and see some of the ways that these repetitive questions may bring be brought up in that gem state so I'll see you in a few minutes so we'll do a slightly different story because it is hard when you do know the story not to use the story so I'll give you something else to work with Alejandro okay all right so I'll be a diamond for a few moments, and then I want you to see if you can notice when I shift into emerald state. Because again, do this with your thumbs if you would, do this. The thing about our approach to dementia is people can change over the course of just a few seconds. So you're always sort of doing an assessment of what is she doing? What isn't she doing? Do I need to change to match her? 
Because if you keep thinking I'm diamond-like, I'm clear and I'm sharp and I'm following along, when I'm not, I will become more and more distressed because you're asking more of you than I can give. Okay. Alejandro, let me ask you something. Um, I, I thought that, that Andrea was coming by today, but I haven't seen her. Oh, you thought Andrea was going to come today. Yeah. Yeah. I, you've not seen her though. No. Hmm. Shoot. So was she coming? Is she coming? Yeah, Andrea, is that, Tifa, is Andrea long hair or short hair? Oh, she always wears it up mostly. You know, your wife, your wife, Andrea. Oh, yeah, she she puts it up here. Yeah, right here. yeah, do you know another Andrea? Um, I know, a, a, do I know another one? I know one other one, so I oh, wanted okay. to. Well, yeah. I thought she was bringing your one, your little one. Oh, bringing my little one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The the girl or the boy? The little girl. The little girl. Oh yeah, you thought she was bringing um, uh, Lily, Lily. Yeah, Lily, Liliana. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, I thought she was bringing Liliana. Well, shoot. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen her yet, Tifa, but. Well, you know I can't find her anywhere, and I was looking for her. Well. Hmm. Well, that's not good if we can't find her. You thought well, she was going to be here. I didn't know I was supposed to watch her. And I didn't know that I was supposed to keep an eye on her. Oh, yeah. And she. See, look, they have all these things here, and I, I can't find her. Oh, ooh, Tifa, tell you what. And I didn't I, mean to lose her. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't mean to do that, to Tifa. You didn't. Hmm, that's hard. So I did it. Ooh, Tifa. Yeah. Tifa. Let's call. Call her. I'll call her. But I don't think she can talk on a phone. She's too little. Ooh, oh, not Lynn. Let's not call. Let's try Andrea. Let's see if we can get her. Do you know Andrea? Do I know her? Yeah. Let's get her on the phone here. Okay. Well, you call okay. her for me, okay? Yeah. Thanks, Tifa. I appreciate you helping me with this. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Because I don't know where she is. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So larger group. Let's go back to larger group. All right. So, Catherine, do you want to give us some ideas or feedback about this interaction that you just watched? Because some folks were picking up on it. I, I went from, oh, Andrea's not here. She's not bringing Liliana. And, and then what happened? It really wasn't about Andrea. It was about you having feeling responsible for the baby. So you were going back to a time when you were taking care of a little one. Okay. And so here's my current environment. For those of you who were, who were on very early in the call, I said I stopped a minute at a McDonald's. And another McDonald's outside. Playgrounds. Yeah. And so playground kid grandma i've watched lots of grandkids and kids at playgrounds and all of a sudden do this with your fingers it's really important to realize how quick this can happen for people this is where people tend to think about it as sundowning but it doesn't necessarily have to do with sundowning it has to do with in that moment whoa i just got displaced in time and situation and all of a sudden, something that visually or auditorily is happening in this moment is taking me back to another place in time. And in that moment, it's often, again, an emotional connection to an episode. And once I have this happen, Alejandro got me to a different place. So what was his strategy? What did he do? He was using your words and validating all along. He was not trying to tell you, no, she's not coming. He never said no. So he was trying to stay with you. He, start, he was giving you this or that question. Um, and then he tried to um, say, can I help you? And it's okay. Well, you know. Okay. So what I'm going to show you, take your hand out, because this is a, this is a quick cheat sheet I made up for us for today. And it has to do with what are the steps to 
communicate well, to be responsive in communication. When people are saying the same thing over and over again, or they're getting stuck. So step number one, get your thumb up and do this. You need to get connected and that's that PPA. So that's doing the verbal thing. So when I say Alejandro, she goes, hey Tifa, you're needing something. He's, he's letting me know he's willing to be be with visually, verbally. If you have a physical presence, it would even be offer your hand to the person. Then, next step, do this. You need to say back what they said so they know that you heard them. And you want to make sure your intensity is right up underneath them so they feel listened to, not just with words, but with feelings. So, Catherine, since you're right there, I can't find Lily. You can't find Lily? You no, can't I, find Lily. I don't know where she went. You don't know where she went. Okay, now stay flat instead and see what happens. Hey, listen, I can't find Lily. You can't find Lily. Huh? You can't find Lily? I can't find Lily. Can you okay. hear me? I can hear you. You said you can't find Lily. No, why aren't you being helpful? Okay, keep a calm down. Oh, shut Just up. calm down. You shit, I'm calling the police. Keep up. Oh, good God. 911, I need help. No, the number is 119. Huh? The number is 119. Shut up. I'm not listening to you. You're full of crap. Okay, so if you don't support me when I'm in this moment and I'm lost, because I am a little lost. I keep coming back to this, I need help, where's Lily, I can't find Lily. So whatever's worrying me, whatever I'm interested in, comes up again and again and again. So you've gotta be able to bring the energy up to match so you can help me come back down. If you won't match me, I can't come down because nobody's listening. And so then I wanna go get a bigger authority figure. I gotta get out of here. So you've increased my, elope, my elopement risk or my resistance risk or my seeking of assistance risk. But I will have fewer words um, when you do that because I'll have lost my ability to talk even more. So once we do, do the PPA, reflect back what we hear, then we get to the offer. You give me something that I'm asking for. You try to offer me something that makes sense. So with, with Alejandro, I said, I can't, can't find Lily. Where's Lily? I can't find her. Tipe, you're looking for, sorry, I had to find my mute button. You're looking for Lily. You can't, you can't find her. You can't find Lily. No, I can't find her. I don't Ooh. know. She was right here. Oh, Tifa, let's check. Let's check with Andrea. Andrea. Yeah. Does she know where she is? I let's see. I she might know where she is. Okay. Yeah. Well, how are you gonna check with her? We'll do a video on here. We'll see. Let's see. Let's call. Oh, okay. You call her and tell me. Okay. Now. He did an offer, and then what was his step four was an interjection. What was the interjection? What did he, in, what did he put into the picture for the first time? To try something different. We're going to try something different, the pause, the new thought. And his was, we're going to get her on the phone. We're going to get her on a video. And that, for me, was a new thought. I didn't have that. And so he paused the repetition of the Where's Lily? I can't find Lily. We're going to do something. Oh, okay. Now I'm with him. And now we're in seek mode. So we're now going to see if we can find something else. We'll see if we can find Andrea. And if not, you know what? I've left a message for her. Tell you what. Oh, hey, Tifa. Now you go back to interject. Oh, hey, Tifa. Listen, could you help me a second? That is a distractor. You can only do a distractor if you've got them with you when you're heading off down the road. Okay? So I want to pause here. This is you've got to think before you do it. But I'm going to pause here for a second. So 
is anyone keeping up with chat that can help me out here with things they've seen on chat? Because I haven't been able to keep up with chat because I know there's a lot going on on it. I think people were interjecting what they saw and heard a little bit. Okay, cool. Uh, and then there was another question that just came in. So what do you so what do you do when the family member doesn't want to be called? I think is the question. Yeah. So one of the things to consider is one of three things. Could you record a message from that family member that could play? So do they have to be there in real time? Oh, mom, I'm so sorry I'm not here right now. Listen, I know you might be wondering where Liliana is. I've got her with me. I am so sorry. I should have let you know that. I know you were thinking she was going to be where you were, but I actually have her with me. Does it have to be in real time? Or can we play that message over and over again? We got another question, Tipa. Um, what if they are very angry when they're living in a in assisted living or memory care unit because they want to go home, but their family has stuck them there? Okay, so we're going to do that one in a minute because that one actually requires a full out. We're going to do it as a diamond and emerald. And then we'll do it as an amber. We're going to actually hold on to that one. That one's a big one. And we want to put full focus on it. So that one's really important. So we did a diamond, we did an emerald. Are folks feeling like you got a little handle on diamonds and emeralds and how to respond? So let's go through it step by step. So Catherine, I'll let you be my role play partner this time. Okay. Hey, hey, listen, I need to tell you something. Tifa, you need to tell me something. Yeah, something about the, the thing in the room. Okay, there's a thing in the room you want to tell me about. Yeah. Can you show me something about it? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you angry, Tifa. It's not I'm just I'm angry. You're just shutting up. I just, I'm trying to help. I'm sorry. I'm trying to help. Okay, pause. All right. So Catherine's having a hard time of shutting up. That's because she's a very lovely person and she's trying to be helpful. But unfortunately, in this moment, she's talking too much. And I'm trying to think of words to tell her, and she's telling me too many words. And she started off great, but then what happened is she gave me too much. And I tried to tell her that so she would quit. And she's just such a sweet extrovert. She just, and her heart's there and she wants to help. But did she make it better or worse? Yeah, Catherine. Wah, wah. Really yeah, so let's try it again. Okay. Hey, Catherine, I, I need to ask you something. Tifa, you need to ask me something. Yeah, it's about the thing in my room. The thing in your room? Yeah, yeah, the thing. The um, there's a there's a thing that I can't. It's not. It's not in there, and it is. It's to be there. Something's missing from your room. Yes, that's supposed to be there. Yes, it's the thing. The thing that you put put things in. It's something you put things in. Would yeah, it yeah, be you your purse? No. Your purse or something else? Something else. Okay, tell me more about it. It's the thing when you, your nose, you do your nose and you put the thing in it. Could it be a waste basket or something else? Not a basket. A, 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 a garbage a, can or something else? A trash can. It's a trash can. A trash can. Well, that's no good. You should have a trash can in your room. Yeah, that's what I was saying, that the thing is not there. You are so right, Tifa. You should have a trash can in your room. Yeah, that's where you put the thing that you but, do with your nose. Yeah, when you blow your nose, you put your yeah, tissue in there. Yeah, I don't there. know where that is. Well, Tifa, huh. would you like to come with me and we'll go find one, or should I go and get one for you? I need the thing in the nose. The tissue or the trash can? Shit, I don't know. I did it again. I'm so sorry, Tifa. 
That was perfect. Because what happens is we try so hard and our brain is so logical and so reasonable. We do this and then do this. We get tunnel vision, but we have a tunnel. And these guys just have binoculars. So they're very much in that moment. What I realized is the reason I wanted the trash can was to throw away a Kleenex. Well, but then what happened is I realized the reason I had a Kleenex was because I needed to blow my nose. And then as I'm out here talking to you, I need to blow my nose again. And now I don't have the Kleenex or the trash can because I'm in a different place. And I know you'll be able to help me and then you just confused me. This is hard for both of us, Tifa, and I'm sorry. And that's one of the most important statements is this is really hard. Because with emeralds, it's really hard. Just when you think you got your head wrapped around something, it's not wrapped anymore. Hello again. In this series, Tipa demonstrates transition from a diamond to an emerald gem state, where someone may begin to get confused with time and space. And she brings out this hand, a tool that she uses to help us learn and retain information. And she gives a step to each of our five fingers of how to respond to these repetitive questions. First, she starts with connecting with the person. So simply making that connection before jumping to the fix or the solution or too many words. First, connect. Second, we reflect back what they have said, matching their intensity and their emotion. Many of us have experienced situations where we tell someone something and they just don't seem to get it because we're giving it to them with such intensity and emotion and maybe they just respond back flatly to us and we don't always feel heard. The same thing is gonna be true for someone living with dementia, that reflection must include that intensity and the emotion. It's scary for us because many of us think that's going to raise their emotion and intensity. But oftentimes, if we get just below where they are, we can help settle that down in a way that really helps them feel understood and supported. The next step is to make an offer as it relates to what the person is asking us about. Um, and then interjecting a new thought. So Alejandra does this in the role play by offering to help meet the need that she was concerned about. And, oh, I could use this phone to call and find out because that was the thing that Tipa was so focused on was where is Liliana and is she supposed to be responsible for her? So Alejandra makes that offer and that interjection. And then and only then, as Tipa says, could he make the distraction or redirection to something else? In the next role play, Tipa and Catherine role play another emerald where our colleague Catherine falls into a mistake that many of us have done, and that is using too many words. I know that I've done that, and chances are you have too. In the redo, what Catherine practices is that connection, a simple reflect, and then offering that this or that that we've talked about before. So the first was, is it a purse or something else? And Tipa says, something else. So Catherine explores a little bit further. Can you tell me more about it? Then she goes back to another, this or something else. Is it a garbage can or something else? This is very challenging. Our natural response is to dive in and provide all options. Is it this? Are you trying to say this? What is, and gosh, how overwhelming that can be for the person. This is gonna be something you hear a few times in this webinar. And trust me, we are not saying this is easy. Our colleague Catherine is very skilled in pack approaches. What we do wanna illustrate is these little changes in the way that we respond can make a big difference in the life of the person living with dementia. It's not easy. 
And that's the last point that was made before I pause this video. Catherine in the role play says to Tipa, this is hard. Sometimes the best response that we can give to someone who's distressed about something is, this is hard. That probably applies to people who are living with dementia and, and all of us. But just that acknowledgement that this is hard can really go a long way in supporting someone who's in distress. We've got a few more clips to show and I'll see you in a few minutes. So Catherine, this is a team conference. So your job is now to help Alejandro who's coming on second shift to work with me. Okie dokie. So you and he need to talk. Okay. Hey Alejandro. Catherine, what's up? How you doing? Good. Ready pretty to good? Roll. Yeah. I like our glasses together. I think they look pretty cool. You look nice with that hat on. Thanks. See, listen, I just, do you have a minute or two? I'd like to talk to you about um, something I noticed about Tifa today. Okay. I struggled a little bit, but I figured some things out, so I wanted to give you a heads up. Okay. okay. She's thinking, she's having a bit of a runny nose today, and so she's kind of thinking a lot about tissues and a place to put her tissues. Mm -hmm. So maybe we want to think about setting up her environment so that she can be successful with the, that simple task in her different environments throughout the day. That's okay. just a thought I had. Yeah, yeah, I think we got some extra boxes that I can put in a few places for her, like dining room, maybe. Yeah, and where she sits in her chair after dinner, you know, especially when she eats, her nose tends to run a little bit, but it's really a little more today. Maybe it's allergies, because spring is here. Yeah, I'll keep some with me, too, I think, just in case I see her. In a yeah, place. so just keep an eye on it, and she does want somewhere that's, um, she seems to really care about where those used tissues go. Ah, uh, Okay. You know how she likes to be neat. So it's got to be orderly, too. She can't just have the tissues. It's more than that. Yeah, I think so. Let's try that and see. Just want to give you a heads up because it was really frustrating. That's good. Thanks for those, too. Yep. Okay, so, Catherine, you did a really nice job of sharing information. There's one piece you didn't share. You know, the thing, the thing that you do... That you needed to blow your nose? Well, you blow something with it. The tissues. I don't know. Oh, okay. Is this Tipa or is this the Emerald talking right now? <laughs> this is Tipa as the Emerald. <laughs> okay, what sorry. Happens? I just needed a pause. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you Catherine. Tell Alejandro I was struggling with today. Yeah, go ahead. Catherine, did she tell you what she needed or did you have to like, was it one of those mystery games again that we You played? know what? It was, we were having to explore the pieces of the puzzle a little bit because she, she didn't have so many words today. So right. I was having to do a lot of um, getting real curious. Okay. And I wasn't the best at it today. I was trying my best, but yeah. I made a couple mistakes. Yeah. That tell me about thing is something we tried before. So I'll try to keep that in my back pocket too with the tissues. And she was able to show me though. She could give me some oh, visual. Me. She was showing me with visual cues. She was able to do this. and you, So her words were very vague, but her visual cues were really strong. So maybe <laughs> stick with her visual cues. Tell me more, or show me. Or show, show me. me how you use it. So pause. So where, uh, where Catherine was trying to go, and this is very common, is we're going to a fix. So, and she did a nice fix. So she did a nice sort of environmental modification so that my need will get met. And that's good because I do have a more of a runny nose. I'm worried about the trash can. But the thing she forgot to share so much with Alejandro was how did she figure things out? She said she had a hard time with it, but what was different about me? Because normally I'm more diamond-like, but today I was more emerald-like, where I couldn't find any, and do this with your thumbs, everybody, I couldn't find my nouns. I just could not find a noun to save me. So it was, you know, the thing, the whatchamacallit, the thing you put the stuff in, the, um, and that, when that happens, it gets a lot more challenging because what you'll be tempted to do is throw words at me, thinking they'll stick. And I'm so busy looking in the, in my trash can of a brain in that moment to find my own words 
I feel like you're wadding up newspaper and throwing it at me and I can't, I can't do it. I can't pay attention to the incoming data because I'm already looking hard enough in here to find my data. And so what you're going to find is I'm going to say frequently things like, hey, Alejandro, listen, I need the, um, the whatchamacallit, the, the thing that you use to, to do with, with, to call her, to call her, call her, call her, call her, not a caller. I don't know. It's something to do with her. Tipa, is it a, a, a collar? No, no, oh, to that call wasn't her, it. call her. Oh, call her, call her. Oh. So Tipa, what did you it... notice this time? I picked up on a sound phrase. I need to get the thing you use to call her, call her, call her, call her. But I couldn't, I didn't get it. I was in the wrong file cabinet. I was in the caller file cabinet, but that's not the one I wanted to be in. That's not the right word, and I knew it wasn't the right word, but I couldn't get to the right word. And so I repeat the word getting louder and louder because I'm so, I know that's not right. And my distress level's going up because I know it's not the right word. So when he did caller, then no. But what he did, just what Catherine said, I'm better at showing. And so when he went like that, I went, no, you call her. And this is the sign language symbol for phone, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> and so that helped me get past the block that I had in front of me. But again, I'm going to come up to people and say, Susan, Listen, I need, I need the thing. The thing? Yeah, Which, the thing. I need the thing. What do you do with the thing? You, you, you put it, you put the thing in, in the, the, the little doohickey and you get, you get, um, you get, you get, um, you can't eat just one of them. You can never eat just one. You can't Barbie. eat them. Huh? The thing may be potato chips? Well, maybe. I don't know. It's not, um, maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Is it something you want to eat? I think so. It's a put it. You put the thing in the thing in the what? You, in oh, me maybe a coin. I don't know. Now, what's the problem, Susan? Can you can you describe what your problem is here? I'm making suggestions, but I'm not helping you find the right. So, what do you have in your hand? I'm sorry, I don't know. What's in your hand right there? The mouse? <laughs> no, what's the one up by your face, the one we can see? A pen? Yeah, Was so what was I describing? Oh, a pen? No. No? I thought it was a coin going in a vending machine. Yeah, can you show me a coin going in a vending machine rather than holding your pen up by your face? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. so you need a coin. Yeah, to yeah go that's it. Oh. Can't eat just one. Yeah, I understand a coin, and you can't eat just one. Yeah. Good job, Tipa. <laughs> None of us is smart. Yeah. <laughs> so why was that so hard for us? Do you think? Because that Susan, you're not the only one. I picked on you, but that was because you were visible. Why do you think that's so hard for us to switch gears and turn into visual sharers when somebody is clearly struggling with language and they're giving us some visuals? Why is that so hard for us to redirect ourselves to the visuals, do you think? I think for me, my brain is probably too busy searching for clues and answers. So and I'm not listening and watching as closely as I should. Oh, so are you jumping ahead of me trying to know where we're going rather than sticking around with me? Oh, 
probably. We also tend to be talkers. Most of us in our lives, we even from very early childhood, we focus on use your words, use your words, build your words. So this, it still is, that balance is hard to, to figure out. Like when can't, when aren't, not can't, when aren't words as effective? Yeah. So what have you noticed? When have words not been helpful to people in this webinar? When have you noticed that words have not been particularly helpful? What have people picked up on? Yep, when my emotions get high, I will have fewer words. What else, Bonnie? When you're on the phone? Mm -hmm. Phones, yeah, words and phones. Uh, phones are hard because there's no visual that goes with them. Distracting sounds, yep, when there's a distractor in the background. What's hard for me? When, when the things that I'm, the thing that I'm thinking, the, um, whatchamacallit, the, um, you know, the thing you do with the, um, where you, 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 you put it on. Yeah. So when I'm not able to find the detailed word that I'm looking for, and yet I absolutely know what word I'm looking for. It's so hard because I can, I can get so close to it. And then when I go to pick it, it disappears on me. And the only thing I can find is, you know, the whatchamacallit, the thing, the, the, the one that you, you do. And, and it's so frustrating for people because then they get so wound up in finding the word that it's hard to listen to anything coming in. And people think they're being pulled by delivering options. But in that moment, I can't even get the options I have in my own brain. And so paying to attention to someone else's options, it's really challenging. And so sometimes the simple word that's the best is TIPA. My first given name said in a positive affirming TIPA. That's the interjection. Because you've offered what you know how to offer. If it's not going somewhere, time out. We need to pause because you're not going to get anything in on that button in that moment. We're repeating something and it isn't going anywhere. I'm caught in a loop and I can't come out. So getting me to pause. Oh, hey, Tifa. So practice that for yourself. I know everybody's muted, but give it a practice. I want you to go, oh, hey, Tifa. Now you have to get your whole face and body into it. It has to be a whole body experience. Ooh. Because what you're truly trying to help me do is let go of in here and socially connect. Because I'm trapped in here. I'm trapped in here looking for words that I can't find. I'm trapped in here looking for a place I can't find, a time I can't find, a, a situation that's gone. So you want to help me come out with you, and then you have the ability to try to seek another place for me to be. But the only way to do that is get me to pause in my seeking, internal seeking, and be externally directed. Make sense? All right. Tifa, so, there were some, oh, were sorry. Switch? Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to bring up, there were a couple other things in the chat, but it sounded like you had somewhere else to. Well, I was going to go to Amber's. Oh. Um, an amber state is where somebody is really all about sensory need and sensory intolerance. And you got to get it, get it, get it. Hey, 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 listen, you got it. You got to go. Come on. Come on. We've got to get on to it. We got to get on to it, Tifa. Yeah, the on it, on it. On it. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Coming. I'm with you, Tifa. Come on, come on, come on. Let's come on. go. Let's get, let's get it. Let's get let's it. Get, let's get go. Let's go and get it. You got to get something. Oh, so pause. So what do you know so far, Catherine? What do you know about me? That you're, you're, you're having a sensory need that's not being met. Um, something in this environment is not working for you. Okay. So what am I asking for? 
to, to, to get out of this environment to somewhere more comfortable, probably. I'm a, that's an assumption or that's my assessment at this point. Because if you got to go, go, you got to go. Go, go, go. I'm yeah. Not, so not, something's not working for you here. That's right. So the best shot you have is I need to go and I want you to go with me. You want a companion? I want to change something. And the environment is what I think we need. Oh, I'm sorry. Speaking of environments that need to change. And you're probably, an, you might be an extrovert if you want someone with you. You're not trying to go on your own. You want a partner in this. So you might, mm -hmm. one of the needs might be companionship. Maybe. I'm just going through a couple. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Could I be an introvert who feels you're my friend? You, you've helped me before. You're a helper and I know you. So this is, be aware that mm. I could be an introvert but if I go to staff and I consistently go to staff, hang on, sorry. Sure you're not in New York City, Tifa? <laughs> All right, hopefully everybody's gotten where they need to go. Um, if I'm an introvert and I turn to staff, it's because I think you, I picked up on the idea that you can meet my need. And I may be very impaired, but I get the idea that some people have more power than other people. And if you've met my need before multiple times, I tend to go back to the well. So I'll pick favorites. I will have certain people that I go toward because they're the ones that are, have met my needs before, or I think they are. And so I go back to that. Now, I will also say sometimes it's not staff. Sometimes it's another resident, which can wear the other resident out because the other person in my life can handle it for part of a day, but not 24 seven. And I will wear people out. This is where if you're a family member, you've got to build a team because if you're the only one, I will definitely wear you down because my language skills are limited and when I want to go, I want to go now. And I do not care that it is 3 a.m. I do not care that you just went to bed a half hour ago. I do not care that it's the middle of the night. I do not care that it's 20 degrees out. I do not care that I, I don't care because I can't care because in that moment, whatever I believe I need, if I don't get some of what I need, I can't chill myself back down. It's not possible for me to chill myself. So I've got to have another body to do this with. And the, the challenge is that what's happening is people are so frustrated with me because I won't let it alone. I, I can't behave myself because my sensory needs flip flop on me and it's intense when it's intense. But equally, I won't let you do what you think you need to do to get me to meet my needs because I don't think that's what I need. Alejandro, you got to take her. I can't take this one more second. So Catherine needs a break about a half hour before that. Because for the last 20 minutes, she has not liked me. And what will happen is her dislike for me will start to be present in her face and in her words and in her body. And so she's actually, without realizing it, winding me up before she hands me over to Alejandro. So this is first shift to second shift or second shift to third shift or third shift to first shift or you know, activities to nursing or nursing to activities. Because what we'll do is we, we, we give it just a little too long of not liking being with Tifa. And Tifa will wear people out. So this only happens with a high energy amber, a high intensity amber. The low intensity ambers, become invisible. They're just invisible people. Um, and so they sit for hours and nobody's realized how long they stay in one position. They don't do anything, don't interact, 
for way too long because they don't know how to initiate an interaction. And because they're not causing trouble, everybody just ignores them. And so they get nothing. Um, and this is where we will say, hey, people, she's fine. She just sits there. And yep, she just sits there, um, which means her brain isn't really getting used. And then when it does, oh, oh, please, please don't. Oh, oh, no. No, because my only interaction with you is when you want to do body care. You're not building any relationship with me. All you're trying to do is get in here to do stuff to me. And so I'm, I get fearful because every time people come at me, there's something they need or want me to do. And so I just don't want to be here. Please home, 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 home. Please home, please home, please home, please home, please home, please home, 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 home. Tipa, you got to go home. You got to go home. Home. You want home. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, Tipa. Please home. So that's sort of one of those sad moments where what happens is our interactions might tend to be not so positive, not so great. When you come to visit, you know, when you come to spend time with me, I'm not expecting the best. I'm expecting sort of not great. And so I don't know what to do and it scares me. And so I, I actually move away and I get smaller and less. Um, and those are, that's really unfortunate because I'm still in here and I still could do things and will do things but it has to be the, so Alejandro, can you start a conversation with me? Hey, Tifa. Tifa, hey, good afternoon. Good to see you. Hey. Hey, yeah. Tifa, it's really sunny outside. Ooh. Huh. Yeah, I gotta do on this one here. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, if Alejandro were in real time with me, he could do something which he can't do. <laughs> Alejandro, what would you think about doing with me, given what you just saw? Um, I'd try some PPA and see if you want to get physically connected. Okay, and, and I would say you're moving too fast for me. And actually, but I started to mirror you here because I could see that you were doing this. And then where would you put your arm with your sleeve that I'm allowed to play with? Well, kind of close to you, but not intruding on your personal or intimate zone. Yeah, so maybe out in our shared space in front of me so I get to handle it and you're okay with me handling it. Mm -hmm. And you don't try to handle me. You let me handle your thing your arm, your, your sleeve, and I get to touch it and mess with it. And it's really okay. And you're pretty quiet while I do it because I'm physically exploring it with my hands and I'm looking at it with my eyes. And then after I do that a little bit, you might actually maybe give me your hat to mess with or give me something else, not your hat, okay? Um, maybe something. I, I, I see that your hat is special. You're being a little diamond about the hat. But, you know, I would, of course, yeah, yeah, no. Yes, I'll have to pick something else. So it's important to know that when people are in amber state and they get repetitive, it's pretty easy for us to turn diamond-like because we get rigid and inflexible and we want it like we want it. We want them to quit. We want them to do this. We want them to do that. Um, and without realizing it, we're actually driving a lot of the distress. This section for me really underscores the importance of a team approach. The PAC team members role play a scenario of providing a pass off of information from one care partner to another. Not only the fixation or the focus that in this role play TIPA had as a focus on Kleenex or tissue and where to put the tissue, that was an important piece to relay from one team member to another. It was also important to relay what was changing in TIPA that, at that stage. At that moment, finding nouns was challenging for her. But what was retained 
was her ability to respond with visual cues and tell me more about it and can you show me what you do with it? So those statements or using the visual cues allowed Tipa to express what it was that she was having difficulty expressing verbally, particularly with that noun finding or word finding issue. What many of us do, as I said in the previous cut in, was that many of us tend to throw more words at the person in that moment. And Tipa underscores how unhelpful that can be. While we're trying to help the person, it can actually be more overwhelming and overstimulating for them. So what are some good alternatives? Using those visual approaches. Um, also, using their name as an interjection. Hey, Tipa. That can help someone get from that focus of what was I trying to come up with? What were the words I was trying to come up with? with to now, I'm connecting socially with you. So Tipa had us practice that. Ooh, hey, Tipa, did you practice? Next, we move into some role plays of Amber State. Someone who perhaps has high sensory need and oftentimes low sensory tolerance and less verbal abilities. So in this role play, Tipa was demonstrating someone who's saying, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, go, gotta get it, gotta get it, gotta get it. And she talked about the importance of really trying to determine what is the unmet need. Whether an introvert or an extrovert, people living with dementia in an amber state can typically find someone who can help meet their needs and they may go back to that person repeatedly. This can be exhausting for the care partner who's supporting an amber. As Catherine demonstrated that she reached out, Alejandro, can you help me with Tipa? And Tipa said, at that point, it was probably too late, that her tension with supporting the person in an amber state had probably gone beyond her max ability at that point. Again, this importance of a team approach is so, so very important that the person living in an amber state has multiple people that they can go to for support that can help meet their needs so that it's not overwhelming for one particular care partner. Finally, in the last role play before I paused, Alejandro and Tipa role play another amber situation where Tipa would be exploring something physically. Again, that high sensory need. Tipa talks about how important it is to allow that person living in an amber state to explore us without touching back. And in particular in this role play, Alejandro gets a little defensive about maybe someone touching his hat. Such a great example of how all of us can find ourselves maybe going to a diamond state when working with someone living with dementia who isn't responding in the way that we want them to or maybe not doing this or doing that that it is that we don't want them to do and so this piece of as care partners what is our gem state is really important to consider as well and when i start to go out of that sapphire state maybe into a diamond or other gem states that it's probably time to reach out for support and help from other team members. So we've got one final section that we're going to review together and I'll see you in a few minutes. So I want to go back to the I don't I want to know who put me here and why I'm here. This is ridiculous. So I'll start with that one and I'm going to have Alejandro just tell me what emotion he thinks I have and at what level am I distress wise? Can you do it one more time, Tiba? I want to know who put me here and this is and what's going on. This is ridiculous. So you wanted a level and then an emotion, correct? What level of distress mm -hmm. am I annoyed, 
am is this getting risky or is this real close to dangerous what do you think i think this is this sounds to me more like the middle range of it's risky and i'm kind of i i want to say i don't think it direct as being an emotion but um i you kind of know what you want and you, what you're looking for answers it seems like but not enough i don't get mean from you i just get more i'm i'm curious and i want to know what's going on kind of a, okay so what helped you figure out i wasn't all the way up into the danger zone because you're right i was i was at a risky i'm at the risky level you could mm -hmm. go, go either way depending on what you choose to do now yeah i think your voice was firm but not yelling um and your words were fairly i want to know who put me here I, this is mm -hmm. this is ridiculous mm -hmm. What is going yeah. on? Yeah, so, and actually waiting for a response rather yeah, than I'm keep going and keep going and keep from going. You. So I'm actually waiting for an answer and I'm expecting an answer. Now, if I don't get what I want, <laughs> this will go on up to DEFCON 5 pretty quick because I'm, I'm teeter-tottering here because I've given you ridiculous, which is a pretty strong word, and I want to know, want. I I even gave you the word, like, want, need. I want to know versus I need to know who put me here. I need to know what the hell's going on. I need, I need out of here. I need you to unlock this damn door right now. Now, what was the difference there? That seemed to be louder, but I also saw your teeth more, kind of an aggressive more, and I need, right? That I need, this has to happen now or I'm going to knock someone out. And I leaned into you. So you need to be real careful about your stance. So this is where you really want to be supportive. You do not want to become my target zone because I am looking for somebody to blame for this. And what else did you hear that time that you didn't hear in the time before? Right side, rhythm oh, section. So so no, no words from Tebow. Forbidden words. I started spouted off those forbidden words. This is where you're going to get somebody on up there with swear words. I'll use that F word. I'll use that you, whatever racial thing. I might kick one of those babies out there. You're an idiot. This place is stupid ass people. I start stringing them together because I can't find any reasonable words. And I am so not okay with this. So, okay, so let's go back to the risk. Now, here's the question for the group. What gem state do you think I am? What's be, what are people thinking? How many people? What do you think, Jennifer? Diamond. Diamond, good job. Yeah, absolutely. Clear, sharp, rigid, and flexible, and I can cut you. And I will cut you if you don't give me what I'm looking for. And this, this conversation we're going to have day after day after day after day, typically for about 50 times in a row before I get into long-term memory somehow. We don't know how because they can't get it into immediate recall or into short term, but boy, they finally get it into long term. Well, you know who put me here, that damn doctor. And let me tell you something. When next time I see him, he's going to get a piece of my mind because he put me here and he says, you need to walk better. Well, this is crap. I can walk fine. I don't need him telling me what to do. These stupid doctors put your places and take your stuff away from you. But better that he do it than that my daughter who loves me and comes to spend time with me, because I'm only going to see the doctor once in a while. Somebody needs to cue him up that I'm pissed and that he needs to be prepared to hear an earful and to say, yeah, I know I hate it. And it absolutely seems unfair for right now, but I'm going to, you know, I've got to figure out, you know, the paperwork, whatever. But he's not going to be as intrinsically involved as those of you in my world. So whether you're the staff member or the family member, we don't want to throw those people under the bus. We do want to look for a bad guy. If I'm always looking for somebody to blame, we got to figure out something or someone to blame for this because I'm a blamer. 
I've got to have somebody that I can be angry with because I can't get that it's my own brain that put me here. My own dementia put me here. I don't get it. I'm not going to get it. You can call it denial if that's what you want. It's actually brain failure. So you ready now, Alejandro? You're never ready for me, right? Never ready. No, but go ahead. Okay. Listen, I want to know who put me here. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Tipa, you want to know why, you, why you're here. I want to know who's responsible for this. That's what I want to know. Uh, who's responsible? Because so I know my rights, and I am going to tell you something. This isn't right. This isn't. Tipa, you are absolutely correct. This is not right. Right, because yes. who has the right to imprison someone who hasn't broken any laws, huh? You've done nothing wrong with laws, Tifa. Right. This is not a good spot. No, I, yeah. I'm not like these zombies here. I, I don't see why I should be in here with a bunch of idiots. Yeah, Tifa, you're, you're right. You should not be here. See? Well, then and call so somebody sorry. and get me out of here. Yeah, bullshit. What happened, Alejandro? I caught myself there, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to be on your side, but I was too on your side. You got there. a little too far over on my side because now yeah. we're breaking out together. Yeah, that wasn't where exactly where you wanted to go, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you stepped a little too many times on that. Yep, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely you're right. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. So, so it sounds like, try a phrase like it sounds like. It Got sounds it. like it feel, it sounds unfair to you. You don't think it's right. Yeah, that doesn't fit, sound good. And let's go with, you know what? Sounds like you should tell somebody about that. How about we write a report? Because what you what are you going to want to do with me? What are you going to need to do with me if you want me to not be yelling anymore? I've got to let you express your emotions a little bit or express your ideas so still. The interjection is, you know what? Sounds to me like somebody needs to hear about this. Tell you what, let's write it down. Let's write it down and get it to somebody. Mm -hmm. Maybe the person who runs this, maybe that's who we go to. I'm not sure, but we need to let people know that you feel like this is not fair, that you have been put in here. Tell you Ooh, what, let me get some Tell you what, I, I, I've got an idea. Catherine, Catherine Quinlan, she's the boss around here. What do you think about writing? Cause write about, write to her? Yeah, because she, I mean, she's the, the big she's chief. Not, yeah, she's in charge. She put me here? Uh, I think she might help us figure out who, how that happened. Yeah, let me tell you, this is not okay, Tifa. And Alejandro, you did the right thing. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to, maybe we can write more and talk to the doctor or yeah. your lawyer or the judge. We got to figure this out together. All right. Well, we need to figure it out because I don't deserve to be here. You, if you don't, you feel like you do not deserve to be here, Tifa. I do not. Okay. So we're going to work on this. Laws. I have proof I didn't break laws. Okay. You have proof and we're going to write some letters together. All right. Would you be willing to work with Alejandro first and then come to me? I don't know about him. He's not all the hard, he's not, you know what you're doing. I don't know. All right. Him. You can work with me, Tifa. We'll put this now, together. Alejandro did that to himself because he said Catherine was the one who's in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. And now Catherine's going to go back and talk to Alejandro about, why did you give her me? Yeah, like I have time for this. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did well with her. I don't know. Yeah, so, nice pass off. So Nicole's going, what if they remember they wrote the letter and they were angry? So where? what happened with my letter? Alejandro? What happened to my letter? I sent it. What happened to it? We sent that letter and we still have not heard uh, back and that is not okay. okay. I know what happened to your letter. Oh, sorry. That letter, you, you put a lot of information in that letter. So you want to know what happened to your letter. You know what? Yeah. I want to know what happened to it. I want to know what happened to your letter too, Tifa. So I am going to try okay, and see uh, follow up. You put a lot of good information in that letter. You gave them a lot of reasons and things that they needed to do. You talked about this and this and this. You guys need to be reviewing with me what I did share and what I did say because Tifa, they, what you does didn't, it mean somebody's done? You didn't break any laws? 
Right. That was right. Yeah. And we had some proof on that letter, didn't we? Yes, we did. And that's yeah. what I need people to hear is that right. because when now it's not my letter, whose letter is it? Our letter. And I feel listened to and whether the letter actually gets anywhere, I'm starting to be listened to. People believe that I have a point of view and they're getting my point of view. Now, they may not be able to get me out of here, but we're in this together. And that feels totally different than people thinking that they're just trying to keep me in here. Now we need to figure this out, but you're giving me back. You are listening to me. I so need you to listen to me and believe that what I'm saying to you is true. Have I broken laws? Do I get why I'm here? The answer is no, I don't. I truly don't get it. And so when we're here together, then I've built a new relationship. And it's hard for people who are introverts to build new relationships. And so that's part of this new culture that I'm in is I've got to find colleagues. I've got to find people that I have value in and they have value in me. But it's not about a prison break as much as it is getting listened to. And once I know that you got, and you, you get it, you, you absolutely can tell me what was in that letter, then you know me. You know me, and I have a place with you. And you know what? Ooh, Tifa, I have a huge favor to ask. You, I know you want to get out of here, but for right now, could you do me a huge favor? That's your distractor. But you can't do it until you have the full offer and connection. And Tifa, something I've noticed in this call that's an aha for me is how important it can be to be in a team, especially when people are having, struggling with this repetition, whether as the person who's trying to get their need met, so they keep repeating and repeating and repeating because there's something not clicking, yep. or as a care partner on whatever level, is that if you start communicating more as a team, then not just as my relationship with you, just our relationship, it becomes a bigger picture. Then we have what we need because I can say Alejandro, and help Tifa, because that Alejandro then knows, I shot my wad, I don't know what to do right now, can you give it a shot because I'm not getting anywhere and I need a break. Or, you know, she's tired of me, I'm not doing something. So this idea of building our relationship with each other and using each other as what we need, including the person living with dementia, because trust me, I really don't know why I'm here. I really don't, I can't hold on to that picture behind you, but I really do like it. And so I'm not doing anything to irritate you on purpose. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can with what comes to me in that moment. And the idea that somebody is, is, listen, I got to go, I can't stay here. Alejandro, can you help me please, Mr. Alejandro? Tifa, you, you can't stay here, you gotta, you gotta, no, I gotta go. get going. Because the, the, um, the person who put me here, they're, they're in trouble. The, the person, they're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And I need to be there for them because even though they did it, I don't want them. I don't want them to be not okay. Yeah. You want to make sure we're, they're okay too. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why they did it, but I don't want them to be mad at me. Yeah. Oh, Tifa, we don't want them to be mad. Yeah. No, please. Because if I made them mad, please tell them I'm not mad. Okay. I, Tifa, I will do my best to, to let I them know. I don't want them to be mad. You're, yeah. Can I, you can I, can I talk to them so they'll know I'm not mad? Oh, Tifa, tell you what. Hmm. Yeah. Could we write it? Could you help me write it for them? I don't know if I can write it right now. I just, I want them to be okay. Yeah, you need them to be okay. You want them to be okay. So, Alejandro, what, what were we talking about with, with Catherine? That pass, yeah, I was. <laughs> well, no, think about in this moment, I can't write it. I don't think I can write it. 
tell you what, Tipa, would it be okay if you told us and Catherine writes it? Could Catherine write it for you? Yeah, I mean, I can't, it, it's, yeah. I can't think of her name, though. Why okay. can't I think of her name? Mom, 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 mom. Somebody told me you were afraid I was angry. I'm not angry, mom. I'm not, you're doing the Who best you this can. I'm talking to? What's this your is, name? This is Kathy, your daughter. Kathy, Kathy. This is Kathy, your daughter. You're not mad at me? I'm not mad at you, mom. Well, why did you put me here? It's a terrible, I know, mom, I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can. I want I you to be you safe. Are. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you, mom, I love you and we both wanna be safe and happy. Well, why can't okay. I be with you? I'm gonna be with you as much as I can. Okay, well, pause, because this one is actually, we're getting close to where we're going in in another webinar, but this repetition, what's this repetition about? Is this a physical knee? No. Emotional. This is an emotional knee, and we see it the most frequently when someone moves into a community from a one-on-one -on -one relationship where that relationship, put your hands together, has been really tight, and all of a sudden, I'm only half of a relationship and I, I don't know what I've done that's made that happen. So there's a lot of distress and repetition around trying to figure out what's happened here. What have I done? And it's similar to children with divorce where kids think they're responsible for divorce and that they're not. It's just, this isn't working anymore. But that's a mature thinking thing that I don't have right now. All I have is that sense of not being wanted or loved or something has got to happen here that I lost me. Um, and so the repetition is around the seeking of a person or the seeking of a relationship or trying to fix something. I'm trying to fix, but I'm actually confused about what it is I'm trying to fix. But this is where trying to figure out if Kathy... Catherine is not available, doesn't want to do this right now. She can't. It's breaking her every time she tries to do it. Then we've got to take it back to the team and we've got to come up with a team response that's going to help me. And it may not be Alejandro because he's a male. It may be that I need a female and I need a young female to be my partner because that's part of what I'm missing is the mother-daughter piece. Does that make a little sense? Okay, well, we have just a couple minutes. You've spent an hour and a half listening to me babble on. Um, I do wanna go back to this hand picture one final time, but I'll also open it up if anybody has any like last minute questions that they wanna put out there. And the reason I wanted to go back to the hand is truly, you know, really what we're looking for is think before you speak, <laughs> pay attention to the other side of the equation, but working on our connect, our reflect, make an offer, <gasps> interject, and only then seek the new place to be. That's when you can do your distractor. Don't distract early on because you'll get a separation because that's not what people want from you. They won't want to be distracted. They want to be listened to. So any chat that we need to respond to before we uh, wrap it up for the session? There was one question about something I think earlier, Tifa, you mentioned a recording of, I think that was the Liliana thing. Um, so kind of questioning the recording without knowing exactly what the subject matter is going to be. Yeah. So what I would do is I'd have about three or four recordings and I'd label them in one, two, three, four, and I'd put emotions on them and I'd say, Oh, Hey mom, it's Tifa. I know you're trying to get hold of me and I am sorry. I am not here. I hate it when I'm not here when you're calling, please leave me a message. Tell me more about what you need, and I'm so sorry I'm not here. So that would be recording number one. Oh, hey, Mom, 
it's Tipa. I am so sorry I'm not here. Oh, I am, you know what? I'll be coming to see you soon. You know I love you. That's a different emotion than, hey, mom, it's Tipa. I am so sorry I'm not here when you were trying to catch up with me. I got tied up and I apologize. I should have been where you wanted me when you needed me. You know what? I'm sorry. No, I love you. And I'm sending you a hug. So those are three possibilities. Now, did I say anything about the specifics about what she's calling about? But notice each one started with a, ooh, hey, mom. Because it's very personalized. That's the thing that catches somebody. And then if my team knows which message does mom need to hear, that's the one I have them hear. And the cool thing about cell phones is you can actually program those things. Those little suckers are really kind of nice. In this final section, we watch some role play with a very common question that we hear from those who are living with dementia in a community care setting. Who put me here? Why am I here? And in this situation, Tifa highlights the fact that many folks who are living with dementia may not have awareness of their brain change. Therefore, when we try to convince or reason with someone that, well, you need to be here because fill in the blank, that is often not a very helpful or successful approach. So we go back to those five principles that Tifa has talked about throughout the webinar. And in the role play, Alejandro was connecting and reflecting with Tipa, but he got himself in a little bit of trouble when he became too much of a support in what Tipa was wanting, and she actually expected him to help her maybe get out of the community. So taking that pause and really developing a skill of how do I connect and reflect and offer without going too far to the other person's side of the street that we get ourselves in trouble. So that's a really fine skill to develop. In the final role play of the webinar, they demonstrate a slightly different take on that, which is where someone is really in a distressed state about why am I here? Why am I here? And Tipa talks about how many times Caregiving situations have gotten to be a one-on-one -on -one with one caregiver at home and one person living with dementia. And these situations can somehow sometimes get so intense. And when placement occurs, it leaves the person living with dementia feeling like they've done something wrong or it was something that they did that made the person mad that has gotten them to this new environment. So in that situation, again, it was really important to connect and, and help figure out what is that emotional unmet need that was being expressed. Tipa brings back the image of the connect and reflect and offer and interject, and then and only then do we offer a redirection or distract. So really, Focusing on the intent of what is someone telling us through repetitive questions and statements and learning how to offer support, offer reflection, bridge the gap and help connect them to a place that feels more comfortable in mind, body and spirit. I hope that you found this webinar to be helpful in thinking about why this repetitive questioning might occur and how to best support someone through their repetitive questions. As always, please feel free to reach out to PAC for additional support. And as Tipa always says, until there's a cure, there's care. So thank you for being a part of the care community, supporting those who are living with dementia. Thank you for watching this webinar and I hope to see you on another one soon.